Okay, well, I'm going to turn it over to Bryce to introduce our program today. Thank you, Julia. So today with us, we have Ryan Wells, who serves as the Community Development Director for the City of Cornelius. In his role, he oversees the current and long-range planning for the city, as well as economic development, code enforcement, and oversight of building services provided by the City of Forest Grove. A graduate of Humboldt State University in Arcata, California, his career has spanned the private, nonprofit, and municipal sectors. Ryan lives in Forest Grove with his wife and two children. So please join me in welcoming Ryan Wells. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Um, I'm very happy to be here. I see a number of familiar faces. Uh, so it's nice to see you all. Um, I did, I did present to this group a couple of years ago when we were uh, working on some economic development work. So I'm happy to be back. Uh, Bryce contacted me a, a, some time ago, uh, asking if I'd be uh, interested in providing an update on development that's happening in Cornelius. And as that's my wheelhouse, I'm always happy to talk about development and uh, the, the current projects that are happening in the city and, uh, and what we are seeing uh, in the upcoming um, you know, time span. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be sharing my screen. I do have a presentation that I'll, I'll uh, have up on the screen. I'll go through <clears throat> a number of projects and the specifics of those projects. And at the end, I'll be happy to talk about any of the projects I share, anything else you might be hearing, you know, uh, through the grapevine about Cornelius and what's going on there, or any other general questions. Um, happy, happy to share that. So let me get this going. So before I get started on the project specific development, I'd like to provide just an update on how we are responding to COVID-19. I'm, I'm presenting from home today. Uh, we have a little bit of an adjusted uh, staff uh, workspace schedule uh, to respond to the current uh, conditions. So our city offices are partially open, uh, both city hall, which is downtown and my office, which is with the public works department, kind of on the south end of town off of South 12th Avenue. Uh, our permitting timelines and processes has, have not really been affected. We're able to pretty efficiently work both from the office environment as well as remotely from home. <clears throat> um, uh, we are partially staffed, so we have people in the office, but also some people working from home. And in certain cases, we're kind of alternating uh, so that we keep uh, appropriate distances and, and, and uh, isolation uh, in our workspaces. But <clears throat> so able to provide the full suite of services and maintain our capacity. Um, all of our meetings have been um, online. So our public meetings like city council, planning commission, as well as our pre-application meetings, which are our preliminary kind of discussions with uh, new developers who uh, want to uh, pitch projects and, and understand what the requirements would be for the city of Cornelius. Those are all being held online. And again, pretty efficiently and effectively. Uh, we are continuing to get a number of development inquiries, both uh, residential and commercial. And uh, surprisingly, uh, home building, which we'll talk about a little bit in this presentation, has shown no sign of slowing, as many of you probably have seen. As a matter of fact, this is uh, by far the most uh, robust home building season I've ever seen, uh, both here in Cornelius and just in my time uh, working in that arena. So a uh, quick overview, uh, this is a current map of the city of Cornelius. Uh, this is a zoning map, so it shows the different zoning districts based, you know, basically what can be built in the different areas. Uh, the most recent estimate of our city's population is about 12,635. That's based off of Portland State University, which has a population research center that does annual population est estimates for cities across the state. Uh, we are about two and a third square miles in total area. And we are a 51.5% Latino population. So we are a minority majority, um, but that's obviously an important uh, consideration as we look at our outreach strategies, <clears throat> our public services, and um, making sure that um, all of our community has opportunities to participate in the public arena and city governance. And uh, we're seeing a, a significant shift uh, in that arena, which I'll be happy to talk about. And then as you all know, Right here in the middle of town, we have Highway 8 blasting right through and cutting our city in half. And uh, that obviously has some uh, implications as far as uh, working with ODOT on uh, highway frontage development and uh, multiple jurisdictions. All right, so I'm gonna get into some summaries on private development uh, occurring in the city. 
Uh, this one is a public-private partnership project. <laughs> uh, this is Cornelius Place, and, and a lot of you have probably seen this project, but I do want to just uh, give a quick brag on this one because it's been such a significant project. This is a multi-use project that includes our public library, which is on the ground floor, and then two floors of, um, of affordable senior housing, um, 45 units in total. This is located on 14th and Adair in downtown Cornelius. Beautiful project, uh, many years in the making. Uh, we had a ribbon cutting uh, March of last year, and then uh, we uh, started tallying how much support and activity, and we saw a, almost a doubling of the number of checkouts month to month once we opened up and uh, had full operations um, at late 2019. Of course, now uh, with COVID, we are all shut down. We're not um, accepting anybody um, physically in the library, but still providing the library services as we can with online orders and um, pickups. And hopefully uh, as <clears throat> things uh, kind of uh, open up again, we'll be able to provide that suite of services at the library once more. Um, and I'll just point out here um, in the bottom left corner of each slide, it's an overview map of the city and this blue star, which sometimes you can see and sometimes can't, shows the general location of the projects to give you a little bit more geographic context. Up in our Northwest Industrial District, we do have a new um, factory that was built recently. This is a company called The Higher Taste, and they make um, frozen and fresh vegetarian and vegan foods, which we'll often see in natural food stores, university uh, cafeterias and hospital cafeterias, as well as a number of different grocery stores. Um, this is a 17,000 square foot building that was built a concrete tilt up. It's in our enterprise zone, which provides some special um, uh, property tax incentives for certain types of new development. And this project opened in March, 2020. We were very excited to do a big ribbon cutting and have our community come out and tour the facility. But as you can imagine, uh, current circumstances prevented that from happening. However, they've uh, opened up their operation successfully. Uh, they've been able to uh, <clears throat> hire a number of local people and are in full operation at this point, um, of course, with accommodations as necessary. <clears throat> in that same Northwest district, uh, the, the old Stuart Stiles warehouse was a, a shipping warehouse and um, a distribution hub uh, in the past. It sat more or less vacant for almost a decade um, until recently this project, this uh, property was purchased by a company that is um, re, uh, refurbishing this, this warehouse into a manufacturing facility. It's a company that makes steel drums, uh, 55 gallon drums that you use for um, storage and shipment of all sorts of different materials. They also refurbish uh, previously used drums and, and get those uh, back out into reuse. Uh, they're gonna be using about 100,000 square feet of this 183,000 square foot building for that use. Then they'll have some uh, warehousing in the remainder until such time as they might be expanding um, their operations on site. Um, they're gonna be consolidating, sol consolidating three legacy facilities from elsewhere in the region. It's a Portland-based company and they are gonna have some site development underway. Although the actual building refurbishment and renovation is probably not gonna take place until late 2021. Uh, due to some other permitting requirements, as well as the, the delays that COVID has had on many uh, business operations. Um, over on the uh, west side of town at the old happy hour restaurant um, next to Janine and Josh and Hannah's uh, uh, workplaces, we are going to see a uh, reuse of that, of that site. Um, some of you might have observed that the happy hour uh, restaurant building was taken down earlier this year and it sat a little bit quiet uh, for a number of months. However, next year we're expecting to see development take place on this uh, nearly one acre site into a new Carl's Jr. Uh, drive-through and sit-down restaurant. Uh, they've received land use approval for this project and are going through the other permitting steps, including ODOT, which uh, is a little bit more of a, a delayed process than what we uh, manage internally in the city. Uh, this would be a 3,000 square foot restaurant, typical uh, modern um, uh, design, and we're really looking forward to seeing a productive use of that space. Moving into the residential arena, uh, we've had a number of different residential projects uh, occur in Cornelius uh, since my time arriving in, in 2016. Um, uh, a couple of those projects have, have 
wrapped up, and so I'm not including those in this in this uh, presentation. But we've seen about eight new residential subdivisions um, occur in Cornelius just in the time that I've been here, and we hadn't seen a new subdivision in Cornelius since 2002, which just gives you an indication of the the vibrancy and revival that that we uh, um, at, at the city of Cornelius are experiencing and are very excited about. Um, up in the Northeast area, it's a new kind of addition to the city of Cornelius within the city boundary um, is the Greystone project. This is a 54 unit single family residential development uh, accessed off of the highway via Northwest 341st Avenue. Um, this is one of our higher end developments. We're actually seeing houses in this neighborhood selling for 550 to 650 up to $800,000. So, um, you know, as we talk, you'll see that there's a wide range of different uh, development types. We're not just building you know, affordable housing. We're not just building high-end stuff. There's a nice variety and a spectrum of, of uh, costs and, um, and uh, abilities for, for folks of different means to, uh, to purchase homes. But this one is definitely on the higher end. There is a small neighborhood park here in the, the Southwest corner, overlooks Job's Ditch, which is a natural wetland area, which is really nice. You're out there playing with your, with your kids and uh, or grandkids, and you can hear birds, you can see deer. Uh, it's, it's a nice natural interface. And uh, to date, we've had 49 of the 54 units uh, permitted. Over on North 19th Avenue, as you're driving north past the uh, the Fred Meyer um, area and going up out of town, on the left side it was the the former um, Harvey Marine boatyard. It used to be a, a animal processing facility way back in the day. But this property has been repurposed now and is going to become a 56 lot residential townhouse subdivision. Um, this is called the Council Creek Terrace Project. It has gone through all of the subdivision process. It's really just, just about gearing up to start seeing some vertical construction. Um, and so again, this is gonna be townhouses. So we're gonna have smaller lots, more compact development pattern. Uh, there is a small park on the Northern end that overlooks the Council Creek uh, you know, um, stream corridor. So again, a very nice view uh, from that park. And uh, Dr. Horton is going to be the developer on this, and so you know, well-known developer. And um, I think it's going to be a nice opportunity for uh, first-time home buyers, uh, those with some small with small families, um, or folks who just don't want to have to deal with the yard and are wanting a more compact living space. Uh, moving kind of more over along the highway, uh, just across the street from Wilco on North 7th Avenue, so just across from Adair, of Adair from Wilco, we have the Brooks Terrace Project. This is a functional extension of the Cedar Terrace Project, which uh, was developed um, earlier in the 2000s. Um, but this is another uh, uh, 34 units of both single family homes plus 21 apartment units. So. If you've driven by recently, I'm sure you've seen the single family homes being erected, plus the little park that's located right here um, in the middle of the project. Uh, but uh, in the beginning of next year, we're likely going to see the 21 apartment units being developed. And this will be built right along the, the highway frontage. So it's going to kind of create a, fit, a visual barrier uh, from the back of the neighborhood, but also create, I think, a more attractive uh, presence and a, an attractive frontage along Adair Street for folks going by and kind of extend that kind of more compact downtown feel uh, toward the west from, from the official kind of downtown boundary. Um, one thing I really like about this project, not only does it fill that gap that we've all kind of been seeing forever on those, on those empty fields, but this park right here fills a really important functional gap in our park system. A couple of years ago, we did an analysis of um, you know, where parks are, are, are serving our community and where there are some gaps. And this neighborhood specifically was identified as one of the key gaps. And so in, in requiring this park development as part of this subdivision, we're gonna be able to serve this whole neighborhood with some open space and recreational facilities that they've lacked for quite a while. And so um, that's gonna be a really important. Uh, really quick, funny anecdote. Um, I know some of the folks that live in the Cedar Terrace neighborhood just to the north. And for years, they were asking me, Ryan, when are you guys going to build a park in our neighborhood? You know, we're waiting and waiting. Our grandkids don't have anywhere to go. We have to get in the car and drive to a park rather than be able to walk. And, uh, you know, a couple of years, about, about a year and a half ago, they moved out of this neighborhood into another neighborhood in town. And then, of course, now we're starting to build a park in their neighborhood. So they always, they always razz me about that. 
And this is really the big one. Um, this is the Laurel Woods development. Uh, as you can see here on this map, it's in the kind of south, southeast area. And this whole area was a new addition to the city boundary back in 20, uh, 2016. Uh, this is one of the first projects I worked on when I came over uh, from the city of Hillsborough to serve the, as a, um, uh, in the city of Cornelius. This is a 905 unit residential subdivision. The biggest by far in Cornelius's history. Uh, this is the, the size of a development that not many cities get to really experience, but um, it's all the cars just kind of fell into place. Um, so this is a, a really interesting project in that it's gonna be built over 12 phases. And currently we have phases one through seven under construction. Uh, some of the earlier phases, phase one is pretty much built out. That's right here. Phases two through four, this whole area, the, the western half of the project, you're seeing a lot of houses being, uh, you know, being uh, constructed right now. And we're just getting new permits almost on a daily basis. It's remarkable, um, you know, the, the pace at which we're getting new permit applications. Uh, we're now starting to see the east side uh, gearing up for uh, residential development. Um, so um, I think over the next couple of years, we're just going to continue to see a rapid pace of development here. Um, and of course, all the public infrastructure that comes with it, new roads, um, new sidewalks, and as I'll talk about in just a moment, new parks and open space uh, amenities. So this project um, has a nice mix of different types of housing. We have the traditional single family detached with nice yards and uh, a little more elbow room, but we're also seeing some townhouses. We have some attached units. So again, it, it offers uh, ownership opportunity for a wide spectrum of income levels. So we're seeing some of the townhouses sell in the high 200,000s. So, you know, on a regional scale, that's a price you're not seeing for a new product uh, almost anywhere. So I'm glad that, that Cornelius is, is maintaining its ability to be affordable for a, a wider range of, of individuals and families. We're also seeing some alley loaded or rear loaded houses. So it has a little bit of a different um, you know, development pattern and presentation on the street. Uh, to date, we've seen about 240 housing units uh, permitted out of the 905. So, so plenty of, of, of distance to go, but again, um, the, the, the pace of development really just picked up this year despite COVID, despite all the other stuff. And so a lot of this 240 houses, they were permit, permitted this year. Um, and so um, our, our staff have been very busy trying to stay on top of it and be responsive to the needs of the, of the development community. And then finally on this project, as you can see on this map, uh, this project boasts an incredible amount of open space and recreational amenities, something that we were very intentional as we negotiated with the developer we wanted to take the opportunity uh, to make sure that this, this development, as well as the greater Cornelius and Westside community were served by the open spaces afforded in this, in this project. So here in the center of the project, right here, we have a six and a half acre community park. It's gonna be the second largest park in the city once it's all completed. Uh, this park is going to have a full size soccer field, uh, two basketball courts, uh, walking trails, and notably a, um, a new playground that has been designed in partnership with a nonprofit called Harper's Playground. Uh, they design or help design um, fully accessible ADA compliant types of playgrounds. And so this playground will be able to serve youth and families who, um, who may suffer from um, physical uh, disabilities, mental challenges, or even emotional challenges. Uh, a lot of the concepts in this park have been designed with that in mind. And so um, I know that Harper's Playground has also helped with Anna and Abby's Playground um, in, um, at um, Rogers Park here in Forest Grove. And so, you know, as we're developing new facilities, we're trying to be more cognizant of the needs of the broader um, population and um, make sure that people of all abilities and conditions have an opportunity to recreate and enjoy themselves. So this is gonna be a, a fantastic park. We also have a nearly one mile long trail that extends along the southern and, and western sides of the project. It's about halfway built now, and you're welcome to go out there and, and walk along there. Um, it, over, it overlooks the Tualatin River floodplain, so there are ample opportunities for wildlife viewing and just simple, um, you know, natural, uh, natural uh, uh, nature interface there. Um, and we're going to eventually be building a bridge right here to connect the two halves of the trail. Um, and make it a complete one mile long uh, route. 
So that's an overview of the, the major projects going underway. We have some other things in the works that um, because they're not formally submitted yet, I'm not prepared to announce, but we are gonna see some additional industrial development occurring in the near future, as well as some new, um, new residential opportunities. Uh, but in total, since 2015, we've seen over 1,200 new residential units permitted. So that means we've approved the subdivision, they're under construction or have been constructed. But um, that's a tremendous number of, of new units in a city that when we started, we had about 3,200 residential units in total. Um, the majority of these are single family residential uh, housing, but we have seen some apartments come up. Uh, we're in the process of doing a housing needs analysis which uh, informs the city on how uh, we are gonna be able to accommodate population growth and housing demand over the next 20 years. That's something required to us by this, required of us by the state of Oregon. And so we're in the, in the, in the process of developing that now. Uh, with all that new development, we're expecting to see about a 25 to 30% population increase in Cornelius, which is remarkable. Again, I said we're about, about 12,500 now. So doing some simple math, that can get us up to about you know, 16,000 plus over the next number of years, um, assuming that the pace of development continues as it is. And I do expect that this is gonna provide a critical mass for commercial and industrial growth. So we can see a more robust uh, downtown development, more uh, workforce development up in our Northwestern industrial district, and really just create a more uh, holistic and complete city and complete community so that people can work here, they can live here, there, maybe we can help reduce that impact on Highway 26 and some of the commute impacts on the west side. So with that, I'm happy to uh, entertain any questions from the group. Um, you can also reach me. Um, I think Bryce has my contact information. Bryce, feel free to share that. And if you have questions later on, I'm at your service and happy to, um, to talk with you off, offline as well. Hey, Ryan, what was the, the total number of residential units that you were saying? You, we got 1,200 new ones coming in. What was the 25,000, 32,000? I forget what the number was. Um, oh, so um, right now, well, when we started this whole you know, uh, glut of development, we had about 3,200 residential units. Got it. Um, and with another 1,200, that you know, gives us up to about 44, 4,500. Now, uh, another interesting statistic is that Cornelius has the, high, the largest household size of any community in Washington County. The average household size in Washington County is about 2.8, last number I saw. We have an average household size of 3.5. So every house boasts a, a much larger number of people. And so that calculates into a larger population per unit um, as the growth occurs. Thanks. Ryan, are there plans to uh, build more schools, um, like junior highs, high schools? Yeah, that's a very good question. I, I keep on, on track with that. You know, uh, David and I were in contact uh, pretty regularly, as well as um, the folks at the Hillsborough School District, because notably, this western two-thirds of the property of, of the city is within the Forest Grove School District boundary. But this eastern, more or less one third of the of the city is within the Hillsboro School District. So I've got two school districts to, to coordinate with and keep informed on our development. Um, I'm not aware of any uh, new facilities that are going to be built in Cornelius over the next eight years or so. Um, this property right here, I think you can see my cursor, uh, just north of the Laurel Woods development, that's owned by the, the um, Hillsboro School District, and that is slated for a new school at some point. I'm expecting that that's probably going to be an elementary school or an elementary and middle school combined um, campus. Um, based on the recent investments that the Hillsborough School District did out of their um, school bond at Glencoe High School, which is the high school that Cornelius students feed into, I'm not expecting to see a high school on that property, which is, you know, people have their different justifications for that. I, I think it's kind of a shame because I sure would like to see high school and the impacts and the rallying effect it has on the community here in Cornelius, but um, I, I don't expect that to actually happen. So um, maybe some more elementary and middle school um, development within the next decade, but nothing in the, in the short term as far as I'm aware. 
we're reconvening the long range facility plan this spring and th this will be part of the conversation that's going on specifically with the um, popular we're basically full at cornelius elementary so one of the things they'll be looking at is with this increase in population how do we begin to manage more students in that area so um more to more to find out in the in the near future about what the what we'll be doing school wise Hi, Ryan, it's Janine. I, I just wondered, did the city ever decide on what to name the park down in Laurel Woods? Yeah, so the um, the big park here in the middle, uh, we have a parks advisory board, which meets on, once a month, and members of the community um, volunteer on that board. And they're the ones tasked with providing uh, recommended names for our new parks. And we've had a huge number of new parks, as you've seen in this, in this presentation. And we take those recommendations to the city council and city council is the, is the body that ultimately um, um, adopts the, the names. So this, this park right here, this has been uh, named Mariposa Community Park. Mariposa is a Spanish word for butterfly. Uh, I think it's a nice, uh, we've had some kind of natural nature themed park names down in this project. So it sticks with that, but also uh, recognizes our multicultural character in Cornelius. And it's a really nice name. So um, Mariposa Community Park. Ryan, what's the latest on the Council Creek Regional Trail? Good question, Rob. So um, we've been very active on that project, actually. Some of you might be aware that um, the, the cities of Forest Grove, Cornelius Hillsboro, Banks, um, and Washington County, and Metro, all these different agencies have been working together since about 2013 or so on uh, developing a, uh, a new trail system that runs that would uh, join downtown Hillsboro and all the way through Cornelius and into Forest Grove and ultimately northward up to connect with the Banks Vernonia Trail. So if you're looking at the map here, this Northern rail line is currently um, a more or less defunct rail line. It's technically active, but um, the, uh, the, the entity that uh, uses the line is in the process of abandoning that line, which opens the door for us to uh, collectively purchase the property and then uh, develop a uh, bike, bicycle and pedestrian trail, uh, much like the Banks Renonia Trail, um, kind of a reuse of an old um, uh, rail corridor, um, but with also a future opportunity for a mass uh, public transit option. So because it's a 60 foot wide trail corridor, the first phase will be a, a paved bicycle and pedestrian trail, again, connecting Hillsboro, downtown Hillsboro to Forest Grove. Um, but then uh, the later phase, which would require significantly more investment, it might be an opportunity for a bus rapid transit line or some other uh, form of uh, public transit um, to, uh, you know, be another option uh, for, uh, you know, public public transit rather than uh, just the Line 57 bus that runs along the highway. So uh, we've actually secured one and a half million dollars for uh, for design and um, engineering. And we're in the process of trying to lock in some more money for um, construction ready design. And then of course the construction uh, costs as well. Very good, thank you. Also good, good presentation. Thank you. Ryan, did the YMCA ever end up going into the um, project there um, at the Cornelius Place? Yeah. Um, Thank you, Virginia. So uh, no, that actually didn't happen. So the, the Cornelius Place, one thing that I didn't mention on the project was that um, in addition to the, the library space here and then the 45 units of affordable housing up top, right here on the very Western edge, we have a 3000 square foot um, space that we had initially anticipated would be occupied by the YMCA. We had been in long talks with them, but they pulled out kind of at the last minute. And so we've been in touch with a number of other uh, community service organizations. We even had a pretty, um, uh, pretty productive conversations with Portland Community College or a satellite campus or whatnot. But you know, COVID just, just pulled the rug out from everything that we had going on with that. So right now that, that space, the 3000 square foot space is still vacant. We do have a mission to fill it with a community service organization of some sort but uh, we haven't finalized uh, who or what that's gonna be yet. Thank you.